In this corner, Willie Pep. Spaghetti and meatballs killed more Italians than all the wars. I lived through 241 professional fights. 241 professional fights, 65 amateurs. That's an awful lot of fights. And I'm all right now until I hear a bell. Don't ring any bell. <laughs> <All right. laughs> Willie's friend, Benny Donato. That's an old joke that he's been married six times. You know, if his horses were as fast as his woman, he'd be a millionaire today, but he hasn't got dime one. <laughs> Boxing historian, Bert Sugar. He will tell you he has a refrigerator, a car, and a wife, and they're all working. Trainer, Angelo Dundee. He said, geez, I, my whole career I had bad hands. I couldn't understand it. He said, but then I realized the referee kept stepping on him. Sparring partner and friend, Billy Kearns. He'd say, look at that Billy Kearns. Look what I did for him. I made him good looking. I wore out six pair of gloves on his face. Look at him. Vinny Donato. He tells a story about uh, his wife. He says they're all good housekeepers. After the divorce, they all kept the houses. <laughs> Willie's son, Billy Papaleo. So one time in the corner, the guy's saying, I want to fight Willie Pep. Damn it, I want to fight Willie Pep. And the trainer says, how many times do I have to tell you, you are Willie Pep? <laughs> Born 1922, raised in an unheated flat, his manager later renamed him. But his father, a Papa Leo from Sicily, called him Guillermo. It was on the streets of Hartford that the small boy discovered his grit, shining shoes and standing up to bullies. Vinny Donato. One day, he gets to the corner, and this other kid was there. So what is this? I've been here for going on two years now. This is my corner. So the kid takes off. He comes back with this big, tall, black kid, and he pushed Willie on. So he gave him a shot, and he really hit him right in the chest, and he knocked his wind out. So Willie went down, and the kid started walking away. He so says, wait a minute, we're not through yet. He says, give me a chance to get my breath. So he got his breath and proceeded to give the guy a shave and a haircut, and he got his corner back. And from then on, nobody else took his corner. His youth he spent in the gym, losing just three of 70 fights as an amateur. A legend accounted for one of those defeats, Billy Papaleo. They were in Norwich, Connecticut, and a carload of kids come up from Harlem. So as the, as the evening wore on, there was two guys left in the dressing room. So Willie asked his, asked his corner guy, Who, who's that guy fighting? He says, well, he's fighting you, he's fighting me. The guy was damn near six foot tall. Willie at the time weighed 105 pounds. The other guy weighed almost 130. So they said, well, Willie, if he was any good, he wouldn't be fighting you. Turns out to be Sugar Ray Robinson. And Ray made a crack to my grandfather after the fight. He says, Key, keep an eye on your boy. He's going to go places. Well, who would have ever thought that both of them went places? Highly skilled, Pep was also well-schooled in cheap tricks by manager Lou Pescuzzi and trainer Bill Gore, who advocated a butt in a clinch and a foot on the toes. In 1942, age 20, he won the featherweight title. His record already 55 and 0. Pep beat the best of his day, and he became known as the Will of the Wisp. The words of writer Anthony Marenghi. He was poetry and rhythm, dancing and boxing pumps. His artistry challenged vision. He was unbelievable. Boxing historian Hank Kaplan. He had the most educated feet he could parry punches. He could spin fighters away from him. He could bob and weave. He could slip punches. He had phenomenal speed. Billy Papaleo. Like some of the old time trainers used to say, you couldn't hit him in the ass with a handful of rice. <laughs> he was quick. There wasn't anything that Willie Pep couldn't do. And Pep was at the peak of his powers, fighting Jackie Graves in 1946, Bert Sugar. Before the fight, Pep had told all the ringside writers, watch me in the third round. I'm going to win the round, and I'm not going to throw a punch. And guess what? He'd move in. He'd fake a punch. He'd grab him. He'd spin him. He'd move out. He'd begin a punch. He'd pull it back. He'd block a punch. He'd move under. And on two of the three scorecards, without having thrown a punch in the round, he won the round. But just six months after that masterful performance, his record an astonishing 110 victories with one defeat, Pep nearly lost his life. 
It was January 8, 1947. Lou Vescusi's wife, Nellie. Willie had been to Florida, and he was on his way back. And they ran into a snowstorm in Jersey. And uh, the plane went down, and at the time, Willie was asleep. And uh, there was a number heard. Three died. 18 were injured. Billy Papaleo. So when the rescue workers were uh, taking people out of the plane, they happened to notice one was Willie. So a guy says to his partner, that's Willie Pep, he, he's the champ. And the other guy says, well, it looks like he'll never fight again. And those words cut through him like a knife. But five months from the day of the accident, he was back in the ring and fighting. And there were doctors at ringside shaking their head, they didn't believe it. And he passed up a $500,000 settlement in order to fight again. He had been placed in a body cast and the insurance policy would have paid up if the plane crash had resulted in the loss of his livelihood. But Pep would box another 19 years, another 131 bouts, including four legendary encounters, four street fights with Sandy Sadler. In their first meeting, Pep was dropped for the first time and finally knocked out in the fourth round. Some said he was finished. Three months later, February 1949, 15 vicious rounds, but he took back the featherweight title. Sadler won the next two, but Pep's courage was already burnished in many minds. Burt Sugar. It was outside of maybe Ben Hogan, the most unbelievable comeback from injury in the history of sports. Retiring in 1966 after a 26-year career, he had 230 victories, the most in boxing history.